Hello and welcome to Learning Space. I am your host, Dr. Pamela Gay, and with me this week, I have guest, a guest in fact that many of you probably know, I have with me Dr. WD-40. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Dr. WD-40. You can just call me Wade if you want. Um, I'm a relatively new streamer, started in January, streaming video games, and now I moved into science. So I got my PhD in biological sciences. My bachelor's is in astrobiology, so very diverse background. My dissertation work, I studied uh, Alzheimer's disease and neuroscience. Oh, wow. So. You did the full skip. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone always asks, like, oh, why'd you go from astrobiology to neuroscience? And, you know. Jobs? Funding. <laughs> <laughs> Now, funding for a degree. <laughs> <laughs> for for those of you who are new to the show, Learning Space uh, each week sits down and talks to someone who nowadays does as part of their job science communication, science education. We work to put science in your brains one way or another. And uh, in past episodes, we've had Skyly is here. We've had Nancy Atkinson, who is an author and editor at Universe Today. Uh, this is a new show, so we haven't had too many people. We've had Fraser Kane. And each week what we do is we sit down and we talk to people and find out how is it that that they've made this choice to not just be another scientist with their nose to the grindstone producing more journal articles, more proto-scientists, but Mm. instead are helping everyone out there become more passionate, more knowledgeable, more into science. And this week we're gonna hear the story of an astrobiologist. And I'd actually like to start by, what is astrobiology? Well, you know, when I chose my school, I did, at first I was like, oh, chemical engineering. And then the school I applied to, I was scrolling through, select your major for your application. And I saw astrobiology, space sciences. What is that? <laughs> so, of course, I went and looked it up, and it's the study of life in space. And every, I, I grew up central PA, so I just told everyone aliens. Sounded cool. And, <laughs> and that's, that's and, kind of what it I, is. I selected it then. And a week later, I called and said, hey, do you guys have all my application info? And they're like, yeah, you've been accepted. I'm like, oh, thanks for the letter in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> they probably and, have like dates they send all that yeah, stuff out. Yeah. And but so, yeah, then I got down there and it's astrobiology as a bachelor's degree. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. It's a quadruple minor in physics, space sciences, chemistry and biology but you're about three classes short in each of those for a major. <laughs> oh, geez. I had zero free electives. So it was a, I had electives I could choose, but they were restricted electives. <laughs> so, so is this the kind of program that you really pray that you have AP credits and if you don't, you really die? I got out of bio one. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you went into this only kind of sort of knowing what you were getting into. Yeah. And part of that is this is a completely new field. If, if you don't mind me asking, when did you start university? Uh, I started in 2008. Two th- oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, so astrobiology really started to become a field yeah. in 1995 when we realized, why well, yes, there are planets out there and they aren't all orbiting around neutron stars and this was with the detection mm-hmm. of uh, 51 peg and then the quick planet after planet after planet that was discovered with stellar spectroscopy and this made us realize we need to prepare to find life as we do not know it now what kinds of things with your quadruple minor <laughs> went into building the story of how we search for life as we do not know it well the weird thing is the like the program itself was all exoplanet based yes <laughs> so a lot of astrobiology is very exoplanet and my interest was at the time was extremophiles what's your favorite favorite uh well 
everyone I consider the tardigrade an extremophile. Yes. Survive in extreme environments. Yes. Um, but uh, acidophiles are always really. Those are, and then the radiation eaters that I can yeah, never yeah. remember the name of. They're they're. And arsenic eaters. Those I didn't know about. Yeah, and now the I just talked about a paper on stream the other day about some that eat ethanol, which is the cleaning solvent they use in the clean room at NASA, and they found this group of bacteria <laughs> that are eating the cleaning solutions. So there are still bacteria. They, the bacteria numbers are below the numbers allowed for you know a regular launch. But if it was a Mars mission or something like that where they're looking for life, it's like right at that limit. So does this mean they have to use bleach or something? Uh, or they, UV? Yeah, they have to use different techniques. <laughs> but there's like this little group of um, acinetobacters that were growing by eating the ethanol in the cleaning solution. That's so, wild. Moonshine doesn't kill everything. <laughs> okay, I wonder if it makes them blind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But like, so my interest was heavily in, um, you know, life out there and the biology. And so the department wasn't super focused on that. So I, had, I ended up substituting a lot of bio courses more. So I made my degree. One nice thing about the program is that they let me play with the degree how I wanted because it was new. That That's awesome. So, so what kinds of wild substitutions did you make? Uh, cell bio for astrophysics one. I so so this is the amazing thing about a lot of science programs. I, I was an undergraduate at Michigan State and I really didn't want to take organic chemistry because I knew that the kinds of astronomy I was going to do were the kinds where all the atoms you worry about are hydrogen, helium and everything else. So mm -hmm. this is where we call hydrogen X, helium Y, and everything else is Z, and we're good. So orgo seemed like something I really didn't want to take, and I somehow convinced them to let me take graduate-level stellar nucleosynthesis instead of freshman orgo. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I, I got away. Like, I got out of a physics department without having to take quantum. <laughs> I still I, what I substitute for I think <laughs> evolution or no physics of the atmosphere or something like that. It was some weird substitution. I did like a double sub. I'm like That's I'll take these two wild. courses and they signed it. I'm like yes. <laughs> <laughs> now today you you do a lot of communications as part of what you're doing. You mm -hmm. are another part of the Brainy Bites team here on Twitch, which CosmoQuest X is also part of. And what I really love is you're doing your lecture prep, which you have to do yeah. while streaming, which means that your internal dialogue, which is for all professors, some level of sarcasm, and you have achieved the perfect level of sarcasm <laughs> while doing this. You're doing this necessary task and getting to let your internal dialogue escape for the benefit of others. Yeah, and you know, it's great. Like, you, you know, doing lecture preps, you sit there yeah. and you're thinking inside. Here, I can think out loud when I'm putting this together. And I'm like, oh, should I say this dad joke or that dad joke? You know? <laughs> and then my chat's like, oh, no, don't say any. <laughs> or, or there have been times they've given me jokes. I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. But Or someone, um, we're talking about uh, the respiratory system. And someone shared, we're talking about how the vocal cords work. And someone shared a video of the lyre bird and how it could like mimic a chainsaw or a car siren and things like that. Oh, so I wow. sent the video, linked it in chat, and I put it in class discussion and should look how crazy you know voice boxes can be in other organisms so you know it's been a great way to also make my actual lectures better so i do yeah. the lecture preps and then i actually do the lectures i already have made which are more question based and i already know what i'm talking about whereas when i'm doing a lecture prep i'm also refreshing myself yes on all yes. this stuff because some of the stuff i've learned years ago or i taught last semester so I do a little bit of both, and then I do the uh, paper discussion night as well. And that's great, too, because it's hard to stay up to date with what's going on in the field with everything else going on in life. And this is a way that, like, gets it me reading papers. And also you. with my Discord, people are sharing papers like, hey, what do you think about this? And I read it, and I'm like, hey, now I know about this. So, you know, 
Now, I love it. what what inspired you to do this initially? Did you do other forms of new media communication before Twitch, or did you no. go from gamer to scientist on Twitch? Yeah, I, well, like I said, I started back in January, and right now I'm only an adjunct, so I had a lot of free time during my days. Oh God, I know, <laughs> I know. And so I was like, what should I do? And I, was like, and I you know, watched a lot of Twitch. I didn't know there was an education group on Twitch. And so I started with the idea like, oh, I can stay, you know, PhD in biology in my info, play games that I would be playing normally. Yeah. And have nothing to do during the day. And then if people have biology questions, they can ask me during stream. Like my first stream, someone came in and said, oh, you're a biology professor. What's the uh, what's the Krebs cycle? And I stopped stream. I pulled up paint and I drew out the Krebs cycle and, and all the bonds in the Krebs cycle. And they're like, oh, and then they followed. I'm like, wait, this is cool. And like I initially wanted to do like tutoring for people through my discord, but that's never started. Now I just do the lectures and stuff on here. And it's grown since then. And finding brain bites has helped a lot. It's really encouraged like this can actually work on Twitch. And you, you bring up such a good point where our our chats are and here i am gesturing at the chat you can't tell that uh, our our chats are filled with these fabulous curious human beings yes chat i'm looking at you uh and even you paranor <laughs> even you paranor and drop bear and blame pig <laughs> and art is passion i've seen you on so many different things blame ping who i keep mispronouncing blame ping is another uh uh one of the streamers out there hello fenmill uh and and they're now all discussing the krebs cycle <laughs> <laughs> these these are amazing people who just want to learn and get excited that we're people that are excited about what we know and sarcastic about what we know now and mm -hmm. then and let that internal dialogue escape now you you are an adjunct professor and I was one of those for a long time and and for those of you who don't know the different stages of professorial ship there are the um, people who get tasked with generally teaching the 101 classes who get paid significantly less and don't have a permanent position that typically have the title of instructor lecturer or adjunct professor and these people have often the same credentials in terms of educational background as the other professors, but due to luck, timing of the graduation, or they just like to teach more, they, they ended up in a different route where they're spending the majority of their time not having to do university administrative tasks, not having to worry about the next grant that comes out the door, but instead get to focus on teaching, which unfortunately just isn't as well respected. And mm -hmm. it requires just as much prep, just as much hard work as writing all those grants do. And if you're teaching a ton of classes, you don't get to breathe without feeling guilty about all the stuff that isn't yet graded. Yeah. Now, being an adjunct, I always found that there were the classes of people who were super interested and showed up and wanted to be there. And then there were the students who were like, expletive, I have to take this class and I'm never going to use this information for anything. Why am I here? On Twitch, there's nobody here uh, that doesn't want to be here. Um, yeah. Do you, do you find that this makes a significant difference in the dialogue that you get with with the people in the chat versus the people in your classrooms? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, I mean, chats, like, they're there. They actually want to hear what I'm saying. They're interested in it. And, I mean, this past semester is good because I'm teaching a six-week anatomy physiology one and then another six-week. And that, those st same students go into A&P two for the second six weeks. So they do A&P one and two in one summer. Mm -hmm. So there's students that really care and they know what they're doing like right now everyone got a's and b's i never gave out all a's and b's before that's I don't awesome know if, i don't know if the university's gonna be like why'd you give out such good grades <laughs> but but you know then 
on the other side, like you said, those uh, intro entry level courses, like I teach a bio one course and there's a lot of dual enrollment where yes. I teach the junior college, which a lot of the students, uh, the way this county works is pretty much anyone can go into the dual enrollment program and yes. they still have their high school mentality. They have, they haven't yet to see the difference between high school and college. And then also in that same class, I have the 45 year old person with five kids at home and they're going back to school to better themselves. So it's just like, that's one fun thing to teach at a junior college is such a diverse amount of people. Yeah. And you're teaching non traditional students. It's also so much more so, pleasing. It's um, made me a better teacher too. And and we <laughs> we have an interesting comment from Horizon Sai, who's another one of the Brain Bites uh, streamers, who's saying uh, that one of the best comments he got in his class reviews was, I liked that when attendance started dropping, he stayed the same and didn't get bitter. And I think that's a reflection of, <laughs> you get left with the people that want to be there. Yeah. And they're just better yeah. to teach. The problem is, is when the people that aren't showing up then also think you're at fault for them not showing up when their grades bad I <laughs> that's when it's hard to deal with they're like how can I fix my grade uh, so is there, extra, oh, is there extra credit so I I am powered by sarcasm and coffee and I uh, when I was a classroom instructor I I wrote in my syllabus that attendance is not mandatory if you're getting good grades and you're bored, there is no reason for you to be here. However, if you get bad grades and you don't come to class, I reserve the right to mock you. And that that's just like flat out when I, what I put in my syllabus because I know as an undergrad, like I had two classes that I only went the day before exams and I still got four O's. And mm -hmm. so really, I those were hours of my life I got back to dedicate to things I was struggling in. And um, yeah, it's it's one of the things that you learn once you get a bit more senior and you're gonna get there is, <laughs> is you can mock your students for being silly as long as you warn them they will get mocked. And um, there's a certain amount of schadenfreunde in the student coming to you and like, I never went to class, I have to get an A and you're just like, Meh. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I'm, I'm making, I'm already making that change. <laughs> Whereas, like, I offer them to come to my other section, and if they can't do that, it's like, yeah, I, I take attendance, and because it's part of their grade, then uh -huh. and I take the attendance on Canvas, you know, before you, every class, and if they miss seventy five percent, they're not eligible for any curve. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, interesting. if they miss twenty five percent, so they're not eligible for any possible curve or bonuses. And also I think it's a university or a college rule where you can't miss, uh, you have to attend at least 75% of the classes. Okay. So you automatically fail. I, think. I would have been toast as an undergrad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I, because I knew who I was as an undergrad, there was no way I was ever going to make uh, attendance mandatory. <laughs> No. Yeah, you know, I I I, I like that um, rule too because I don't have to take attendance. Yeah. I like taking attendance because it helps me learn their names. That's the only good thing. I I but, run into the problem that I'm now teaching. Well, I I'm not in the university classroom anymore. I'm now at a nonprofit. Uh, this show is brought to you by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, a 501c3 nonprofit. <laughs> Your subscriptions and every bit help sustain this show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I when it, when I was in the university classroom uh, here in the Midwest, I ran into a problem that I never had teaching in Texas or Massachusetts, and that's the generic white person name problem. Mm -hmm. I, I was teaching physics for scientists and engineers as like the primary thing I taught. And I swear to God, there was one semester where all three girls in the class were named Aaron in a class of 70. And like everyone else was Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, cause Bible belt. <laughs> <And> <laughs> so it's way harder to attribute everyone, the correct name to everyone mm -hmm. um, for the boys. All the girls had the same names. That was easy. Um, 
But when there's like 10 names, it's a lot harder, strangely, than when you have Merrick and Raj and all yeah. these completely unique names. Yeah. So multi-ethnic names, we need more of you in our classrooms. <laughs> I like Twitch with the usernames. Yes, <laughs> yes, and they're required to oh, be unique. Mo most, most usernames. <laughs> There's a few I don't want to say. Now, <laughs> do, do you find that sometimes you get more regular attendance from your, your chat than you do from your classroom students? It's, you know, it is, it is funny to think of that. I'm bad at keeping to my schedule at a set time. So okay. I stream at different times. Some of my streams are afternoon, some are evening. So some people can attend some and not others. That's why I like to, you know, do different times and things like that. Yeah. But yeah. there are, you know, reoccurring names. Uh, like Ken's the potato. She's there. <laughs> She's in the front <laughs> middle row. You know? Hey, Ken's. <laughs> welcome. Um, oh, mine's always late. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. And, and Paranor, you're right. That's Daryl and his other brother, Daryl. That, that is something I think actually happens here. Um, oh, man. <laughs> Artist Passion is saying that some of his lecturers never told them information about exams. Uh, I guess I was lucky enough to be at two universities for undergraduate and graduate school where the syllabus was written in stone. Um, yeah, no, they take syllabuses really, really like important now like yeah I have to submit mine they have to approve it provost signature things like that and you cannot change exam dates or they kill you no yeah yeah not all universities are like that the last university i was at you could willy-nilly have not have exams <laughs> well, i i guess where i did my undergrad it was like that and you didn't have to like there was one class i took where i had no idea what my grade was we didn't get an exam back we had three exams in a paper we okay. got an exam back the last class before the final. We got exam one back. <laughs> so, so this brings us to best practices in teaching. Um, I, I don't know about your PhD program, but mine was very limited on how much training we got on how to train people. And mm -hmm. one of the primary things that professors do is teach. Where, what is your educational and science communications background, if any? So I got, I, I don't know if I'd call it lucky, but I consider it lucky now. Mm -hmm. I was a TA for five years okay. at, during my PhD. So I did a straight PhD program, no masters. Mm -hmm. And I was a T, TA for biochem one and two labs. And I had full and, you know, I was independent teaching it. Uh, there were some other TAs working with me, but I was the lead TA and the professors let me design all the labs. I, I had that for observational astronomy. Yeah. That's kind of wild that we both did that. And I'm guessing you were the only student in your program doing that. Yeah, yeah. I was, I don't know if it was like, uh, you know, just because the professor was like, oh, yes, Wade's here. He can do it. I, and I saved him a lot of pain from having to design all the labs. But, you know, that was like my intro to teaching. Like I found all the background information, you know, which kit we should order or which experiments we should order. And. Like for biochem two, I had even more free range. So I was like, okay, I know these are methods cool. that they're gonna need later in their life. So I wanted to focus on teaching them methods rather than this experiment works. I wanted to teach them this experiment doesn't work. And a lot of experiments won't work. Now troubleshoot. <laughs> <laughs> now, this sounds like you got to learn how to teach experimentally at a certain level where yeah. you were thrown to the wolves as a graduate student. Mm -hmm. And you learned how not to be a sheep. Yeah. Now, there are all sorts of well-defined best practices in education that I think a lot of us stumble on uh, because we take the time to listen and see what works and what doesn't. Now, the thing that always gets me is how different it is here on Twitch and in other social medias where we're taking on that role of educator versus being the educator in our classroom with so many students who are required to be there. What have you found carries over and what have you found is like completely different? Don't even try to do the same thing both places. Um, I don't typically swear. <laughs> the classroom but sometimes it drops on twitch um i probably do more dad jokes on twitch but that's wild some, some of the uh things that i don't know things that carry over would just be 
I don't know, Twitch has helped me communicate better. So like someone, someone will be like, wait, what was that? I don't understand that. Can you explain that again? And to me, it's like, okay, this is common knowledge. You know, it's to me, it's common knowledge because, you know, it's my vocabulary. Yeah. And then it teaches me to slow down and explain it better. And because you get such a wide variety on Twitch, it's like, mm -hmm. like the wide variety you get in a classroom. But and I, I found like the best teaching styles are I try to make it more hands on. Yeah, I use PowerPoint, but that way when they say, oh, can I get notes? I'm like PowerPoints on Canvas. <laughs> but for the ones that miss class and but like I like for anatomy and physiology you have all the models and I wish I could stream with all those models but I I don't think the school would like me carrying a skeleton home with me or the the four thousand dollar you know muscu muscular system uh but what if my stream would ever advance wait, it would have those things a four thousand okay I need to understand what this is because in astronomy we can never get a star in the classroom so the best I'm ever going to do yeah. is like stellarium so so tell me more about this muscular demo because I was going to say we can just like crowdsource so, a skeleton yeah. but I don't think we can crowdsource a muscle system but I don't know what it is well it's pretty much a skeleton but it's all the muscles and you could actually take the muscles out because you have superficial muscles and then inferior muscles so deep ones it's and a three-dimensional puzzle of awesome so it's pretty much you know the mannequins at the store yeah imagine them just covered in muscles no so skin. so I remember as a kid growing up that my mom who originally trained as a nurse had this transparent man thing that you mm -hmm. pop the two layers of plastic off and then you can pull the muscles off and then yep. you have all the veins and all you're basically and yeah yeah yep, that's what it is but those are like four thousand five thousand for an actual good one yeah hers was only this big so yeah now this one is cost goes as, as the cube of the size i suspect yeah this one's actually like normal torso size. Dang. And then you could also get like just a leg or an arm too. So that that model is just a torso. Then you have to buy the leg and the arm to go with it. <laughs> and, and Drop Bear just made an excellent po point. It was the visible man, not the invisible man. <laughs> that would have been much cheaper. <laughs> um, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, and and this feedback that we get, uh, Uncle Bill is pointing out that it reminds him of Muhoodles uh, using Twitch chat to help her script her YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's all of these different ways that we can leverage chat to improve everything that we do. Now, have you ever tried something that totally works in the classroom and totally died on Twitch chat? I thought the well, the lecture prep wouldn't work on Twitch. One day I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stream. I I was scheduled to stream that day. Uh huh. And I was like, eh, I'm just gonna do it on Twitch, and because I had to work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had to. I had like two. You were trying to figure out how to do all the things. You were yeah, multitasking. Yeah. So, you, an adjunct has a lot of time when they don't have to prepare the lectures. So this is my first time preparing all the anatomy lectures and right. A and P one and two in twelve weeks. So a lot of my time when I'm not teaching. Please tell me these are two separate classes and not that you're trying to teach AP one and two in 12 weeks back to back. Yeah. So the first six weeks is AP one and we're just, they took their final today. Summer session, summer session. Yeah. In the okay. second six weeks they take AP two, they're the fast track students. So yeah. I'm sorry. And this is, this is my first time teaching it. <laughs> and writing exams is going to be yeah. oh god yeah but something i haven't found anything that works in the classroom so the classroom it's mm -hmm. more professional okay like, everything everything i do i guess i'm not as professional on twitch of course <laughs> um so it's not the same version of me um but like i don't do straight even when i have my lecture days it's more of just a open conversation with if chat could ask a completely random question and we go on a 30 minute tangent and I happen to have a slide of photosynthesis on the board and we're not even talking about photosynthesis. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever considered trying to bring yes. that conversational style to your classroom? 
I've tried getting them to discuss. Uh-huh. Like there are there are times where it's just like I found something, you know, that we talked about on Twitch. I would then talk about it in the classroom and try to like encourage discussion. Like if I had a good discussion here, it could turn into a good discussion there. Well probably the classroom, like I like where I am because classes are maxed at twenty four. Okay. That is amazing. And if I would offer anyone out there advice who's still haven't gone to college yet. Take all your basics. At well, not only small class sizes are a really important thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It takes, and if that means taking your smaller courses at like a junior college, make sure they transfer. Yes. To the school you want to go to. And then once you get to your senior level courses, even at a big school, your classes will be smaller. So I could never imagine, not, I couldn't imagine lecturing 700 people at once, you know, for a, you know, a massive lecture hall and, I've never had to do more than 140, and that like was even, death. Yeah, that sounds like no one would want to talk and discuss. The first five rows, but everyone further back in the room was like, I'm going to be on my iPhone. Yeah. And then there was the pack way up there somewhere. Like, I couldn't even focus on them so far back. <laughs> and yeah, they could do whatever they wanted. Yeah, and that was one nice thing about my undergrad school too. Like you're walking around campus and the professor knows you and you say hi while passing each other. Wow. Whereas when you pass the students that were in the back of that class, they knew you and you might never even made eye contact with them before yet. I, I had them in lab, so I knew them from yeah. lab. Um, yeah, the classes this big for me were physics for pre-med because the university I was at had a giant pre-med, pre-farm program. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I came from a background of going to Michigan State, which is like, I think, 50,000 undergrads. And then I went to the University of Texas, which is another 55,000 undergrads. And so my computer science classes were all like 250, 300 students. And thank God I was in the honors program for everything like physics one, chem one, bio one. Um, I AP'd out of bio, actually. Um, so those classes were only about 150. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that one-on-one -on -one interaction you can get with professor, though. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's one thing we bring to Twitch. Yes. When I was younger, you know, there's like, you feel like there's a difference between you and the professor. Like, you can't approach them because they're so much better than you. There's like that social difference. Yeah. So here, trying to show like, no. We're, we're all dorks. Too. Yeah, yeah, we're people too. Yeah. Um, we're not that hard to approach. Uh, you might see us at a bar. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not some, you know, uptight jerk that's not gonna help you. Well, some yeah. of them might. Well, some are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, it's just trying to teach them, you know, you can be more relaxed and discuss and the professor actually enjoys it because they don't have to talk for the entire class and like my a and is a three hour and 40 minute lecture for the six week course summer courses yeah but good adjunct pay <laughs> <laughs> so so ken's the potato is is making a, a funny point that actually does hold up uh it's the but you don't bring watson to class and, yeah, and I, I, I saw that comment it's true <laughs> and and Paranor is also making a really good point. Uh, my assessment of Twitch, uh, they write, is it's a culture of keeping it real. I think what helps educational streams is being able to communicate to the audience. And there, there's this, it's a two-way street on Twitch. We do this because people show up and people show up because we put an effort in. In mm -hmm. the classroom, you want it to be that two-way street, but... Yeah. It doesn't have to be, and sometimes you're you're trying to force the relationship because you don't have a choice. Um, they don't always see the effort either. No, no, sometimes it's true. they think the professor doesn't do anything outside of class. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like we walk in and just throw the PowerPoint up and just talk about cellular respiration. No, a lot of work goes into that, and in grading and making exams, things like that. It's not as simple as it looks. <laughs> What is the hardest part of teaching to you? For me, the hardest part of teaching is probably trying to get them to talk more. Okay. 
encouraging discussion without having awkward silences. So I, one thing that may have helped me out, and this is absolutely ridiculous, is I've, I've had weird colored hair ever since I made a terrible mistake as a graduate student. Um, I, I, hey, there are a, a lot of great different colored educational streamers. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, but when I was in graduate school back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, it wasn't common for people to have brightly colored hair. And there was one day I was trying to dye my hair a fairly normal color because my hair bleaches to red in sunlight. And I had like dark roots, bright red, what would later become <laughs> normal ombre ends and I was like I'm just going to dye this all one color and thank you so much for the bits Canada Kim um I I I did this in the middle of the day I set my code running and my code was like and I shall do this for an hour and I'm like I have nothing to do for an hour while I wait for my software to run I shall dye my hair <laughs> And my dissertation advisor called me on the phone five minutes before my hair was supposed to be rinsed out. And there was no way I was going to tell my dissertation advisor that I couldn't answer his questions because I needed to rinse my hair out in the middle of the work day. Um, <laughs> so I talked for an extra 20 minutes and ended up with um, not quite twitch purple, but close to twitch purple hair. Wow. It was not on purpose. It was supposed to be like blue brown. Now I just kind of went closer to the blue and my, my hair has not been normal since. So when I went into the classroom to teach um, at Harvard, no one cared what you looked like. There, there were physics professors with bright blue hair. Hey, what's, <laughs> what's another one? Uh, but moving to the middle of the country to teach at a university where the students actually really needed a good professor to learn. Because students at Harvard, they're gonna do outstanding no matter how bad a professor yeah. you are. And, and I wanted to work with kids that like cared and you're in the exact same situation. You're working with students that you can change someone's life by getting them to mm -hmm. understand something. Um, but when you walk into the hair with, when you walk into the classroom with bright red hair, <laughs> they they instantly put you into the category of okay she's a freak and let's mess with her and when you mess back they talk so you may just need yeah. to find your way to freak out your students completely oh, I'm, I'm very sarcastic <laughs> does it work firstly I, I, I sometimes like to say right now you're all failing because your grade is zero <laughs> you know put that scare in them in a joking way, you know, and you know, it's, it gets easier. It gets easier as the semester goes on too. I try to make Thank a very you, relaxed Finn environment. Mill. I try to make a very relaxed environment, and that yeah. seems to help the best. Like you know, almost you know, a friendly kind of environment. But you know, you still keep that gap where, okay, you could still fail them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, do you do you find yourself trying to keep a similar kind of gap here on Twitch where? there's some distancing between you and the audience just for like mental welfare or are you mm -hmm. just like, Hey, let's be dorks together. Yeah. No, like in discord and stuff, a lot of people private message me, whisper me. I, I probably spend probably too much time talking to everyone, but I enjoy it. And I, you know, like I love my community, a bunch of great people, even the ones that started to watch me for the games and are now they're having to learn and watch me do educational streams and, it's just nice. And it's. so so I, I don't know as much about biology, but in astronomy, at least, we, we all write uh, grants and all of our grants because of National Science Foundation rules have to have both intellectual merit, which is the uh, you will add knowledge to society with this work. And you have to have the broader impacts, which is how you improve your field and the world in general. And what we're doing right now on Twitch, this isn't part of any grant for me. This isn't part of any broader mm -hmm. impact. But there's days where I really feel like we're having more of an impact on general society, hanging out on Twitch and just having these conversations. Mm -hmm. Do yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's really beautiful to see people are actually interested in it, too. Like, I remember my university did, like, you know, uh, science, the physics department did an astronomy night once 
a month for the public. And, you know, it's an awesome, like, scientific outreach thing that they could say they did scientific outreach. And, you know, one thing, you know, about Twitch, though, we're here almost every day. Yeah. Doing this. And yeah. it really shows people, like, okay, they care and they start caring more about learning. And it's just, you get a, a good feedback. And, you know, and like getting messages from people saying, like, thank you, you, you know, inspired me to go back to school. And those I br- I br- like, I've really enjoyed being in your channel. And I'm like, sorry, I can't subscribe. I'd- one thing I hate about Twitch is like that has that money side to it. Yeah. But no uh, one's required to do yeah, anything. Yeah. And, and then, like, I'm not here for the money side. I'm here just, you know, to give back and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to get enough money so that everyone on the Cosmo Quest channel I uh, can like build their hours that they they stream instead of doing it during lunch <laughs> <laughs> um, so so yeah, it's, any, any stream money I make it would go towards something like getting the skeleton or making my PC right. not crash <laughs> Yes, yes, my yes, I I have both a personal stream and a work related stream. Mm -hmm. And some of our work related stream is totally covered by grants. So when any of us is talking about citizen science, when we're talking about Mm -hmm. the software we're developing, all of that is part of us communicating out the results of our grants. Um, But like the news show and stuff we're doing is um, part of our new media budget. And and so that's all supported thanks to user, not user, uh, viewer chatter, thanks to human beings who want to see sustained effort. Yeah. And we work in the nonprofit world, but there's a difference between nonprofit and hungry. And when we're doing the stuff on the stream that we'd have to do anyways, so writing the software, doing the lecture prep, um, preparing animations, that I don't care if we get bits for that. Mm -hmm. But some of the other things we do, it's just like, damn it, I just want to buy a video camera. And this (laughs) is where the Twitch culture is so different. Our Mm -hmm. students in the classroom would be like, what do you mean you don't have a such and such? Why didn't the university buy it? On chat, they're like, put it in an Amazon list. We will get it for you. Yeah, they want to, they, it's, you know, I had someone gift me, you know, Jurassic World. That's amazing. Because they wanted to see me play with dinosaurs. (laughs) And, you know, things like that. And, you know, chat wants to see us do well. Yeah. They know what we're here and doing and, you know, how much effort we put in. So it's, you know, little things like that are nice. Paranoia had a nice statement, though, that positive feedback loop can be payment enough. Yeah, it, it, totally. And, mm-hmm. and it's it's really nice. But, like, I mean, I never expect anything to, like, get, getting that game. I was, you know, I was really taken back. And it's just like, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> So, so Jan, I'm I'm not quite sure what you mean. So Robert Reich was uh, Bill Clinton's economic advisor. He's a prominent blogger uh, and social media person now. I forget what university he's at. What do you mean by he stands in front of a lecture room of 75 people? Is I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I I need more words, please. Um, Carl Sagan's actually quite famous for when he was uh, at Cornell and actually started to become prominent because everyone initially totally poo-pooed him for the effort he spent on public communication of science. But he eventually reached the point where he was able to hand pick who would be in his classes based on were they actually going to take advantage of learning or did they just want to be in the room with the famous guy. Um, I have mixed feelings about that, but it was interesting. Ah, sorry, scrolling through, trying to catch up on the Mm -hmm. chat. I'm looking for people who at me. Um, We had a football giveaway to 16 others in the chat. I hope you all enjoyed your footballs. (laughs) Um, Dare to be nerdy. Yes, we we all need to be freaks and geeks. Get your nerd on. Um, 
He's at Stanford. Robert Reich is at Stanford. Um, yeah, so Jane, you're, you're right. Uh, the chat does take care of people, and Skylius is a fabulous mm -hmm. a example of that, where they got her the gun run pack in, I, it was more than two hours, but I think it was like a day. Uh, it yeah, was, yeah, I remember that. That was crazy. Yeah. It's really cool. Now, you're a researcher. Um, Used to be. Well, now you never teach. stop being a researcher. It's in your blood. You may not be actively <laughs> doing it at the moment. Uh, it's there, There's the things that, that we are by training. There's the things we're yeah. actively doing. When, when I first started podcasting, I remember some of my colleagues coming up to me and and basically saying, why are you wasting your time with all of that online stuff when you should just focus on writing journal articles and being in the classroom? And I was your age when this was happening. I was just an instructor. And I got angry and decided to research the, the impact that what I was doing was having. Have you ever considered mm -hmm. just like doing some basic surveys using those statistical skills that you learned and... No, I never considered that. It's... I it, mean, I am a numbers guy. Yeah. I am always watching numbers and things like that. And like also like analyzing, you know, Twitch. You, you can't do numbers on Twitch. It's so random. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've learned. <laughs> I, I think that also depends on on the chat you have because yeah. I I've worked problems uh, where people are like so could you hit escape velocity skiing on Pluto and I had a moment of completely forgetting conservation of energy and ran all of the math and proved conservation of energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's everyone was totally engaged. Um, Oh, Fenmil saying no. Uh, Robert Reich is at Berkeley. That's fine. It's okay to misremember things. I do. That's it one all different the thing about live streaming too, is we are wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I forget who quoted it once. Maybe it was Hip. He said, "If you ever want to know the right answer, say the wrong one. Don't ask a question." Yes, <laughs> it's totally true. It's totally yeah. true. Now, you're in a unique situation. Well, maybe you and Horizon Sire are in a similar position where you can actually, by doing your, your lecture prep here on chat and then teaching those lectures in the classroom, you can like give the exact same survey and random pop-up questions to both groups and compare learning across them. Yeah, yeah, that's that is true. And yeah, just never thought about that. It's it now has me like wanting to see if I can adjunct teach a course in St. Louis, which is a sick and twisted thought <laughs> to have, but <laughs> Hi, I would like to please teach your Astro 101 course next semester. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. So, what has been your biggest surprise so far? The growth. Yeah. And I didn't think the UDU stuff would take off this much. And well, I didn't see it. And it's you know, it's due to brain bites. And that that front page host back then. That's when I found it. Yeah, I that's true. Page, I'm like, oh, who's this? And I go, I'm like, oh, look at this. What's this Twitch EDU tag? What is Brain Bice? And in Discord, I'm like, whoa, hey, I do EDU stuff. <laughs> there are other people like me. And it's, you know, and now we're getting the EDU group together and we're all like minded. Yes. And we can support um, each other because a lot yeah. of us don't really have psychom mentors and and thank you apathetic rabbit for the subscribe and not the subscribe the follow and you have a fabulous username mm -hmm. uh yes. now one of the things that i struggle with is i don't know about you but i have a lot of well-meaning colleagues who are very well intentioned and should not be allowed to communicate science to the general public and so part of me is like, we need to grow everything we're doing. We need to get as many people talking and bringing every little corner of intellectual knowledge from discussing historic art that led to anime to like, 
let's get people teaching everything and then also knowing that we will end up attracting a bunch of well-meaning terrifying individuals who should never talk into a camera yeah that's a an interesting thing that the edu community is going to you know we're going to have to figure it out as we yeah. work through it we're going to get you know new people coming in saying oh i'm streaming edu but they like you said good mannered but they shouldn't be saying information because they're not saying the right information <laughs> or they're saying yeah. the right information in a way that makes you just like want to go to yeah. sleep yeah and it's i feel like if the that's where there's like a criteria where passion if you have the passion for something you're going to be excited about it and you're gonna you know have a good audience yeah if you don't have the passion for something everyone's going to see it yeah and you're going to end up you know falling off then and i don't know it's it is a weird thing because you know what qualifications does it take there anyone can jump on hit live go live on twitch right now and start saying whatever information they want mm -hmm. in IRL. yeah and they might put the twitch edu tag under it yeah and, you know it's Th this brings up two really interesting conflicting ideas so on one hand i uh, i know several of us at various points have had the people in the stream who are like prove your credentials yeah exactly you and, see that all over right and so there's this huge i don't believe you're a smart person until you show me your diploma and i thank god in this instance have a wikipedia page and i can simply go google me <laughs> <laughs> and that maybe i need to make a wikipedia page <laughs> it, it's kind <laughs> of an asshole response but sometimes that's how you deal with the trolls yeah and the exact opposite of this is uh, Blame Ping is pointing out that that they still haven't told anyone IRL that they stream on Twitch. Um, any of the people that know them as a researcher, even the people in their own lab. And so there's this dichotomy of chat really wants us to prove our professional life credentials that are tied to our actual names. And we're not fully comfortable yet with with telling our colleagues yeah i don't mix my life like, and it's I, I keep it separate like i don't only my really good friends know i stream yeah i never like you know i'd say i'd say 20 of my real life friends know i actually stream and with podcasting the way we grew astronomy podcasting to what it is today is a group of us used to do workshops at professional conferences training people on how to podcast and so here we are standing up at a professional conference saying you can do this with me we can make the world more educated one it, one exercise bicycle ride at a time mm -hmm. no, but I hear dogs barking. that's okay um <laughs> that's part of twitch yeah <laughs> so so how do we grow our community of educators when we're not always free to say, hey, this is the thing I'm doing that has this amazing impact, don't judge. If they're worried about the credentials and whether or not you're allowed to be there saying what you're saying, mm -hmm. I think that's on them. But, but what about our colleagues? Oh, our colleagues? Yeah. So so how do and we go to our colleagues and say, oh, I, I found this great way to have meaningful interactions with the public who want to learn and we can like do meaningful things, don't judge. How do we say that to mm -hmm. our colleagues? Yeah, it's... I had to say it a little bit when I borrowed a microscope. Yeah. I worded it as I do scientific outreach online and I stream it. Yes. I yes. never said I stream on Twitch. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to describe what Twitch was. And that's how I would just, because you know, I mean, Twitch is gaming or ASMR. 
<laughs> you know? And sometimes it's both. Yeah. And it's just so like I described it as, you know, I'm doing a scientific outreach event and I'm streaming it at home and I use my monitor and it'd be nice to borrow the microscope that has the camera attached to it so I could show everyone what I'm looking at. And they're like, oh, okay, fill out this form. That's really cool you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've often found that uh, if I say I'm doing a webinar to a colleague, they're like, oh, yes, yes, I know what you're doing. And and their mental picture is mm -hmm. that it's Zoom or WebEx and people have passwords and they pay fees and there yeah. will be 10 people. And I love what we do so much better. Yeah, no, no, I do. I love it, too. You just have to be careful not to get burnt out by it. Yes. Because we're mixing lives. And, and you're dedicated to both parts. Yeah. And you don't, want, you don't want one to not get your full attention because that community would notice. <laughs> and and so this I, I made myself a personal rule that, you know, real life teaching always comes first. So, and, you know, my, my community knows if I need to get stuff done for school, I'll send out the Discord message saying, hey, sorry, no stream today. I have a lot of stuff to get done. Or I'm just feeling burnt out. I need to take the day off. And yeah. you know, they understand. But in, in a little bit, I still feel bad about it. Yes, I get because that. Like, it's like, oh, no, my subscribers, <laughs> they're not getting their money's worth or something, you know? I Yes. But we, we need that break every now and then. And, and I, I live that challenge because my day job is here on the CosmoQuest channel. My other part of my day job is astronomy cast over on YouTube, but I still want to maintain my own identity and have that safe place where I can curse online. Uh, and it's it's definitely complex. So so I see that Drop Bear has a question for the two of us. Why mm -hmm. Twitch? Why not another platform like say YouTube? What brought you to this platform? Well, I mean, I was already on Twitch watching other people. Okay. Like gamers. Um, I was never interactive in chat though. YouTube doesn't. I don't know. I don't really like YouTube's live feature, and I did, never wanted to stream on YouTube or post c content on YouTube because. I don't know how to do video editing. Okay. And I don't have the time to learn video editing. <laughs> so yeah, YouTube Live would work, but how would I, I don't know how to get an audience on YouTube. Like how do you make YouTube Live visible? Like I don't know anything about that. I know how to If you ever work. want to learn, I can teach you that, but, <laughs> but you're like right, you, their live stuff is nowhere near as good. Yeah. And it's just so, and I'm not gonna do Facebook Live. <laughs> Or Instagram Live or, <laughs> good Lord. But like, besides other streaming platforms that have, one nice thing about Twitch is we have this anonymous donation type th system. Yes. The yeah, they can do PayPal if they want, but a lot of people, they like to stay anonymous. That's one beautiful thing about a yeah. username is being anonymous. I don't know yes. how YouTube works with all that. They, they have no monetization. None, none at all. No. I, so that's, you know, that's one nice thing here is that you can, you know, people can remain anonymous, whereas mm -hmm. you know, some people don't know when they go or new streamers don't know if they make a PayPal donation link. Their right. name is still on there if they don't convert it to a business name. <laughs> yeah. And yes. Um, so Artist Passion is pointing out that in YouTube, um, people uh, like drinking so much energy drink and motivating everyone. <laughs> it's, yes, there is a certain amount of YouTube. Everyone is just a little bit too pretty. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we yeah, have that problem all, on Twitch. Everyone seems to have like beautiful software and editing. <laughs> and perfect lighting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my lighting just went out. I bought like a $2 you know, selfie thing you put on your oh, phone yeah. to put on my desk. <laughs> My lighting is currently being dominated by one of my monitors, but that happens. Now, we're, we're running out, out of time. So I, I want to end with what, what are your hopes for the future in building this, this life of classroom teaching and this life of online education? Or edutainment is, is I think, a better description of what we do. 
for me, I care way less about my personal growth on Twitch. I want to see the EDU community grow. Okay. And that is what would be nice. Like, not everyone wants to hear about anatomy, physiology, and cellular respiration, you know, those things. If we can get the EDU community out there and say, look at all these amazing people streaming this content all over the field and fill like everything from practical EDU. Um, so it'd be steam, you know, yeah. anything they're interested in. If that streamer is teaching yes. what they're doing as they're streaming, it's, they need to be known. <laughs> that this is entirely if, true. If that streamer has, there are so many small streamers out there that have the passion for what they're doing and they're teaching it perfect. Like great. The woodworking guy. I'm, I'm yeah. failing to remember his username. Wood turning. I yes. Think. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, and it's, it's yeah, it's great, and it's we're giving we're giving knowledge, and I feel like anyone who wants to give knowledge should be, you know, help should be introduced to this community. So, like, look, all these people also want to learn your knowledge, and I don't know, I'm big on sharing everything. Yes, and I'm in this for the big picture, not my picture. My picture is what I do during the day yeah. where I teach here is, you know, for, you know, everyone else. And this is where I think so much of us, so many of us are so willing to be on one another's streams. So mm -hmm. I go on with Skylies regularly. We've both been on Inertia TV, I think. You're this now is actually my, this is my first time on someone else. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's surprising. Um, yeah. But, I've been asked to do the podcast for Brain Bites a few times. Yeah, but it's so hard. Time. Right. I've been teaching all the time slots. But so. we're we're doing something that I don't see happening very often on Twitch. We're going mm -hmm. on to each other's shows to support each other and grow the community and help other streamers mm -hmm. grow and yeah, learn tricks. Great. And I, Mike Sai has been helping me learn various code and I've been talking to Serpent AI about <laughs> how he can help us with machine learning at CosmoQuest. And this-, this I, I wanna do something to pop up a multiple choice question on my stream that they vote in chat. Yes, yes. And I don't know coding and that's what I wanna do. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I wanna pre-make all the questions so I could just like, okay, now do this question. They vote quick and I'm like, okay, it's actually this, you guys got it all wrong. Like if I would ask, my, like I, I did, I tried doing it with my bot, like I'd ask, is the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell, true or false? And my chat knows to say, knows to say false. And <sighs> as they were talking about the mitochondria earlier in chat and I was giving them stink eye, I don't know if they saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know, that's, that's the meme. The mitochondria is a powerhouse to sell the things I learned in school. And <laughs> I try to teach my chat that it's ATP synthase, not the mitochondria. The mitochondria does other things. Yes. <laughs> Including having like but, the coolest DNA story ever. Yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. But like, I want to do the chat overlay. I, I thought I found something and apparently in order to vote, you have to use bits. <laughs> So, so this this is on my list of things to figure out. I I um, spend my Tuesday nights here on uh, Twitch on this channel doing various software. Currently, I'm writing up a data visualization to destroy a planet, as you do. Uh, <laughs> and and one of the next things that I really want to work on is trying to figure out how to get the graphics that I'm creating, how to get different things so that they can appear in in the stream as an overlay. Yeah. Um, and since I code in Java and Python, this should be the kind of thing that I can do and I just need to figure out how to code a, a bot that will allow people to use the exclamation mark blah yeah to respond like, Kiboga has something and Mike Sai has something but neither of them I don't think can be easily given to someone else my, well, especially for someone like me that has no idea about coding right so so <laughs> here at least my my minor was computer science and mm -hmm. and I kind of live on computers so um, Mike Sai was extraordinarily generous and his his work is going to allow me to go oh that's how you do this do it in a different language over here um <laughs> so 
Yeah. I, I love this idea that you want to build a future where mm-hmm. people come to Twitch to learn and Twitch EDU is, is a thing. Now, yeah. Yeah. I, I dream of the day that we have IRL and next to it either Steam or EDU or something like that. Is, is this your vision as well? Yeah, I mean, that'd be nice to see. Right now, it's way too small. Yeah. IRL is giving us um, eyes. Yes. So, you know, with Kaboga up there, if Kaboga was streaming under EDU, there would, wouldn't would be many people. Like, just looking at the mm-hmm. Twitch EDU bag for the ones who use that, mm-hmm. there's only, like, three or four people on at a time with it. So if we would have our own actual stream category... I didn't even know I've, about that tag. I feel like we, yeah, it's not even many people know about it. There's a, there's a flat earther that streams under it. Um, <laughs> and, but, so just, I don't know. I feel like if we had like an EDU, Twitch EDU, like an actual tag, like IRL, mm-hmm. we wouldn't get the visibility that we get in IRL. IRL brings its own problems too with IRL trolls, but we, which eventually if EDU grows, it would get that as well if they yeah, would go there. There's always have, trolls. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get that everywhere. And so I don't know. It'd be nice to eventually see like a Twitch EDU category and not a community tag. But I don't think we're not quite there. With no. The number. No, but we'll get look there. At creative. A lot of creative people now just stream under IRL because they get more visibility. And, and that's something that both Serpent and, Al- Serpent AI and I have both uh, experimented with and you definitely do get a lot more drop buys of people Mm -hmm. flipping through on IRL. So now we're starting to get into the forlorn strategies and statistics and marketing theoretical (laughs) conversations. So when is the next time you're streaming and what will you be streaming? Oh, geez. Uh, We'll have a 1070 Ti coming soon. And... So gaming is on the horizon. Tomorrow I'm probably going to do more lecture prep because I have a lot to get done for A&P1 starting next week. So I don't think... I've been playing Jurassic World, but I think I still have to work one more day tomorrow. So I I teach Monday through Thursdays, and Fridays are my off day, so I can do a longer stream on Fridays. And then Saturday I do, like, typically do a community night where we play games. That's awesome. Weird things. And then my next lecture will be sometime next week. My schedule changes. It's based on my weekly life (laughs) (laughs) i i get that i my my weekend streams often get interrupted by my desire to occasionally interact with other human beings irl Mm -hmm. um yeah like last last weekend i was like oh sorry guys no community night uh old friend is in town (laughs) i for me it was oh no saturday painting going to a wedding um yeah so so, i mean and everyone understands and and this is the irony of streaming in irl but then having our day-to-day realities interrupt with streaming in IRL. Yeah, yeah. So embrace the irony. <laughs> and what lecture will you be prepping when next you prep? I'm doing fundamentals of the nervous system right now. So that's today, cool. Today we talked about you know all the different neuronal cells, what myelination is, how an action potential works, and then we get into. Um, the next chapter after this is all the different parts of the brain. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to be tuning in for that. That sounds yeah, it's, cool. It's, it's, it's detailed and wild. <laughs> and when things go wrong, wow. Um, yeah, it's bad. Yeah, there is a recent Radio Lab that's worth listening to if you ever listened to Radio Lab um, on uh, how. Uh, Oh man, I'm completely blanking on the name of the musician. Basically, there's been a variety of different people who develop temporal, frontal temporal lobe uh, Mm -hmm. issues where they were like developing like Swiss cheese brains. And they went hyper visual before starting to like actually lose language capacity. And Mm -hmm. so you have these people that create these amazing things that everyone acknowledges as actually amazing and the reason they're producing them is due to something that's going to take their ability to speak away from them the brain is crazy there's so much we don't know about our own body yeah so like there's so much we don't know about space yeah and then so we're like the 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 complete opposite big picture the you know us 
ourselves. Right. We don't know how we work yet. <laughs> right, right. And and we, we don't have the tools to study ourselves. <laughs> and and the fact that we have like in a microbiome that is so complex that is required yeah. to keep us alive. That chocolate milk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyways, anyways, we should wrap this up. It's been thank you so much for coming on this evening and tell everyone all the places that they should follow you. Uh, mainly just Twitch. Okay. Dr. W40. I'm not other places yet. I don't have like a little Instagram. Well, you are on Twitter. I did find no, you on tw Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, I'm Dr. W40 on Twitter and on and here. And like I do most of my communicating on Twitter and through my Discord. And yeah, that's that's me. So all of Glad you out there, give this gentleman a follow and tune in. And you can tune in with me to start learning about the brain in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you liked what you saw here, please give us a follow so that you'll be notified next time we go live with a new show. Learning Space runs every Thursday. We alternate between even Thursdays. We're in the evening. Odd Thursdays were in the morning for us here in the United States. And this means that for those of you in Europe on odd weeks, you can catch us at 6 p.m. London. And on even weeks, for those of you in the South Pacific, you can catch us at 11 a.m. Sydney time. <laughs> so so I, if you're into space and you want to keep up with everything that's new in astronomy and space science, we also host the daily show Monday through Friday, except on holidays, with either myself or Dr. Andreas Plazas giving you a quick roundup of everything that's new in journal articles, press releases, hot off the press, translating it to you. And we also do live coverage of a variety of different press conferences, spacecraft launch, to help you get a better understanding of what exactly is going on. Uh, we also have Dr. Matthew Richardson, who is teaching Astro 101 right here on Twitch, following The Daily Show on Wednesdays and Fridays. So yeah, here at CosmoQuest, we're all about putting science in your brain. CosmoQuest is a multi-institutional collaboration led out of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific with folks, well, Dr. Matt, he is at the Planetary Science Institute, Annie Wilson, who streams on Sundays. Uh, she is at Youngstown State University working in their planetarium, bringing you the art of science and data visualization Sundays to Twitch. Um, and you'll see other faces and other people now and again. So check us all out. Check Dr. WD40 out and check out all of the Twitch EDU streamers that are part of our team with Brain Bites. And thank you for joining me this evening, this morning, this afternoon, and have a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon wherever you may be in the world. Thank you, everyone, and thank I you. will see you. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, have to find my mouse. My computer ate my mouse. <laughs> Awkward ending to show. There's my mouse. Okay. Goodbye again.